Uncivilized Vitality, and this video is going to be one of two or three, depending on how I chop it up, about uh, sleeping in hammocks and different ways to rest in the outdoors. So uh, check it out. Okay, so uh, a couple different kinds of hammocks. Eno uh, Eagle's Nest are real popular, but these type of hammocks that just tuck into these itty bitty little pockets, right? This is a, a Kamek uh, Rue single. It comes. It's got the it's got the hammock all gathered in there. Bright orange. Uh, that's nice that you're not uh, you're not trying to be stealth campy. Technically, these are called gathered end hammocks. And they've got a couple of little um, loops for a ridge line, a bug net and such. But they've got the little little carabiners here. It uh, unfolds and then when you're done with it, you just tuck it back into its pocket. We'll look at that one in a little bit. Another type of hammock, and this is one I had for a long, long time, um, is the old uh, net hammock. And as far as I know, uh, hammock or hammock comes from a uh, Central or South American word that means net. At least that's what I've been able to to find out. And this is just a super simple net hammock. Um, and it's come. It comes with a couple of uh, ropes just pre-tied on the rings. You find a couple trees that are about six feet, seven feet apart. You tie it up. Uh, and you've also got a you know built-in fishing net if you need it. I've carried this. I've had this net since I got it at the Army Surplus Store when I was like 15. I wouldn't lay in it now because I don't trust that it's not dry rotted, but these are pretty handy. It's self-contained, roll right in there. The biggest drawback is laying on those nets. There's no, uh, it's just, it's not as comfortable as you'd think. Um, maybe in the tropics, but in Northern Michigan in the winter, you want a different type of hammock setup. So we're gonna talk about in, in these videos are the hammock setup itself. And then I'll do a second video, a continuation video that's gonna um, show you some different ways to sleep in the hammock comfortably and or warm. Yep, cars through the park. So don't use a net hammock. I avoid. I would avoid the gathered end single hammocks that tuck in unless these are just lounging hammocks you carry with you in your gear. If you're going to actually be camping in a hammock, you'll have to get a good one. I, I strongly recommend one with a built-in uh, bug net. So we're gonna bring the camera in closer and I'll show you. So this hammock is in uh, what are called snake skins. So I just have these gatherings so I just slide them up and then when I'm done uh, and I want to pack up before I drop the hammock down, I just pull these covers right back over the hammock and they just zip this thing right back in and then I can just gather the whole thing up, throw it down in my backpack, pull it out, hook it up. It's very quick, it's easy to pack and I have to stuff it into a, a sack or roll it. All right. This hammock, I don't actually remember the brand, doesn't matter for the purposes of the video. This is the type that has a built-in, <clears throat> a built-in zippered-in bug net, and I'll show you why that's important. Uh, you can get the kinds where the bug nets zip off, or this one zips open. You can gather it up on the ridge line, uh, so you don't have to use that in like the winter. But the bug net, believe it or not, does provide some extra layer of warmth, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Let's talk about how to attach your hammock uh, to the tree. So I got a few varieties over here. This bright orange one is the most common. It's just kind of a, <clears throat> a length of webbing that's got these little openings sewn every now and then. So you can adjust your hammock. And I'll tell you what, I've not, I, I've, I've used these for years, but sometimes you get to the position where it's not quite this one, it's not quite that one to get a perfect hang. So there are um, alternatives. The reason you want to use some kind of hammock strap is if we look at these three up here, they're all made of webbing around the tree. Do you see up here where they're all made of webbing around the tree? All right, so they wrap around the tree and they protect the tree. The rope's not cutting in, they're not peeling any bark off. The tree doesn't mind if we use the webbing straps. Never use rope, especially paracord or any kind of uh, rope knotted around a tree, you can damage the bark, okay? So like I said, this one with all the infinite loops is pretty good, but it's kind of hard to adjust. I can't move the trees or shorten my hammock. I need trees, I have an 11 foot hammock, so I need trees that are at least uh, 13 feet apart, okay? at least, so I can get a decent 30 degree hang. The ideal hang is not straight. Some people like to really lock these down a little lower. You still, you're not gonna sleep well when it's that straight. They're struggling to get that flat board-like shape um, when they sleep. 
I'll show you different ways. So you want to put your strap up about as high as your shoulders. <clears throat> so for me, it's just relative here. And then you want to run about a 30 degree angle, right? 180, 90, somewhere in the middle is 45 and just come down a little before that. Bring that out so that when it hangs, see that would be um, a good angle. Look here at the strap. I've also seen this trick where people talk about the, the thumb and finger, the gun fingers. And it should, if it's 30 degrees, it should intersect with the strap, both your thumb and finger. See, if it's up 45, it doesn't get my finger. And if it's down too low, my thumb peaks above it. I don't know about that trick. <laughs> it works, I'm sure. I always just eyeball it. So this is the infinity coil, or um, not infinity coil. This is like a, an infinity strap. You can get these fairly cheap. And they're good for a lot of other things too. <clears throat> Improvised packing straps, around, uh, tump straps around camp, hauling wood. But holds my hammock up. Another type of strap that's lighter and is more adjustable is this uh, sliding strap. So I'm gonna clip this in to this little Dyneema loop. And if you see the mechanism on this strap, the way it works is the strap goes around the tree through a single loop and it doesn't have any sewn in uh, coils. So you're, right off the bat, you're starting with half the, half the material to carry, right? And then it's got this little lock in there. It's just a little sliding bar that when the weight's on, it clamps down and catches the strap and it'll hold exactly where you put it. If you need to shorten it, you just pull on the strap and it shortens and then it'll hold, lock into place. If I need to loosen it, I take a little slack off, grab that bar, and then I can feed that strap through and lower it pretty easy, All right? These are great and then it's got a little Dyneema, a uh, little Prusik loop with a Dyneema loop on there. And then I can clip it in uh, to my hammock or, because I've got Dyneema uh, cord in my hammock where I've gathered the ends. <clears throat> or you could just um, replace the carabiner on your hammock with one of these loops. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> All right, I'll edit that out. So um, the, 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 the carabiner in here is gonna serve a purpose later on. We talk about sleeping comfortably, so I always suggest not tying in directly, just using that. Another even lighter way to go is the whoopee sling. So this is just, if you see the strap up here, it's got a loop, a short piece of strap. Usually it's good enough for most trees, uh, diameter of the trees you need, and you run it through. And then through that short bit of webbing is this Dyneema um, cord. It's real thin, a little suspect at first, uh, but it'll hold uh, thousands of pounds. So this is not something you have to worry about. And there's an eyelet and an, the cord runs through itself and it can slide very easily through there. But when I pull on the part that's weighted, it locks down on itself and you cannot pull that string through there. But when it's time to move, you just take the weight off and you can slide that through nice and easy. If the weight is on that, say for the hammock, the one drawback to this is this tiny little eyelet. I wish they would have made that a little bigger. Sometimes when my fingers are cold, it's hard to kind of get that through there, All right? So you see that holds the hammock. If I want to draw the hammock up tighter, I grab that free end and I just slide that whoopee string up and it holds it right where I put it, okay? If I need to loosen up, take the weight off and pull that free end back through so I can loosen it back up. I like the whoopee strings. I've been, uh, whoopee um, straps, I've been using those for a long time. Uh, my second favorite would be the straight strap because then if I just carry these little pieces with me, as long as I have some webbing uh, in my gear that I can thread through here. And I've taken um, strapping off of my backpacks before because, <laughs> because I forgot the straps at home. But my Hill People gear uh, bags, there's a lot of the retention straps like over the top or on the bottom. I was able to take that off, get it around a tree and just barely get in here enough where I felt comfortable sleeping in my hammock. All right, so once you got your hammock attached to the tree, like I said, about 30 degrees, that end I can adjust, right? And now my hammock is out here. I pull my snake skins up, right? And then this hammock has uh, a lot of the features you're gonna want in a hammock, but you know, you can start with just that net hammock or that single hammock or an Eno single or double nest, just a parachute material gathered and hammock. And then you can build from there. You can add um, bug nets. You can add uh, a tarp. Um, it might rain today. We might throw a tarp up in a little bit. Since I'm gonna focus on the hammocks and you know how to pitch the tarps, sorry, fly the tarps in this case, cause they won't be touching the ground. 
take your basic eight and a half or your 10 by 10 tarp and you're gonna run it on a diagonal, a diamond. You'll fly it from that tree to that tree above the hammock to cover as much of the straps as you can and the hammock and then just fly the, uh, pitch the ends down or fly them out to other trees. I probably won't get to showing you the tarp pitch, but I might. You're gonna be tempted to put your hammock tarp up high. You don't want the ceiling too high. You wanna, you wanna go under your, your tarp like this to get in your hammock because the lower the tarp is, the more it'll help you retain heat. And mainly I'm talking for uh, Michigan winter camping. If you're just out in the summer uh, in Michigan, the bug net absolutely essential, but then I usually just throw my hammock up over top of this and for the morning dew if I don't think there's gonna be rain. So you want a hammock that's got uh, an, uh, an integral bug net. So I just get into my hammock and I can lay down just on top of the bug net, right? And I can just have a little snooze. If I wanna sleep uh, like this, like in the summer, sometimes this is just how I do it. There is no insulation below a hammock. Uh, the wind and just the fact that it's only nylon, you're gonna end up with um, what's known as CBS, cold butt syndrome. And I'll show you some ways to avoid that in the comfort video. Right now we're just talking about types of hammocks and how to hang them. So, bug net. Now, in order to hold this bug net up, I need some kind of ridge line to attach it to. And this particular hammock comes with a couple of little, uh, little struts to give me some space. So I'm gonna grab those and put them in here and run a ridge line and show you how that works. All right. <clears throat> All right, so this particular hammock, I guess you'd call it kind of a deluxe hammock because it's got the integral bug net and the little spacer bars. Um, it's not deluxe, it's a uh, it's quite affordable actually, but I like having the bug net uh, built in and I'll show you why. So find this hammock and there's these little sleeves that are sewn in the top. And then I just keep these little collapsible poles in my backpack or with my straps, usually in my pitch kit with whatever tarp. See, they go in there and they're gonna, the little spreader bar is gonna keep that net open. It really is quite handy. Hammocks don't take long to set up. If you're in wet, cold, or uneven ground, as long as you can find two decent anchor points, <clears throat> which 99 times out of 100 are gonna be trees. But sometimes you could use, um, if you're out west or in the mountains, you could use, especially on a slope, one tree and some rocks if you built the anchor right. Uh, you can pitch a hammock in a Jeep. Maybe I'll do another hammock video and show you that. All right, so here I've got a ridge line, which I don't know if it's gonna make it. No, you know what? We'll just run it from the strapping. So I'm not sure it's gonna go around those trees. So I'll just run this right through that anchor point on the strap, and then I'll know I know I have enough to get around this this tree. Yeah, we might have enough to get away with this. Let's see if we can get away with a, <laughs> the world's smallest taut line hitch. Nope, not gonna quite work. So we'll come back and we'll run it through this same thing. We'll run it through the strap of the tree. Run it behind the strap on the tree. Then we can bring it out here. You can do a trucker's hitch. Uh, you can tie it in various ways. You know a bunch of the knots by now ways to anchor this because it's not going to be supporting a lot of weight uh, or any weight. I'm just going to make a taut line hitch. Okay. Then I'll slide that down tight. So now I've got a ridge line and then I've pre-staged my hammock with this. I've got a little shock cord so when I lay down it's not uh, pulling like on paracord and stretching, uh, stressing the components of my sleep system. So I'll take this little um, S beaner off there. And then I go back up here. Let's do this one. And I run this little D cord piece of paracord up the 
I spiral that up my ridge line, and I tuck my little S-beaner through that, and I've made a little climb heist hitch, right? Which basically works like a prusik. Then I can just clip in, and I leave those things attached right to my hammock, so the next time I'm ready, now I can just slide my climb heist up, and I've got a little, whoop, and I've got a little uh, tension there. Come down here, same thing, I've got this little D-cord loop of paracord tied with a double fisherman's bend, or a fisherman's bend, and a little S-beaner. I make a little loop, and then I run the S-beaner around like that, spiral up, <laughs> spiral up the rope, tuck the S-beaner through that original bite, dress the knot up, and now I've got the climb heist, which is in the Prusik family, and then I can just slide that, and I've got that set up. All right, so let me duck under here a little bit. So this hammock has um, a lot of space now. So you can see inside here, it's got a lot of space. Here's another thing I keep in the hammock is a ridgeline pocket. Uh, we'll go over that in the second video, but I can't recommend that enough. I keep a couple bit of paracord tied to some loops on the inside so that I can just throw that ridgeline pocket up there. It's out of the way and a little bit of, you can see how it pulls on the shock cord, right? Between the two shock cords, I got a lot of play so I'm not stressing any of the sewn components of my bug net or my hammock when I actually get my big carcass in there, right? I unzip that on the side. I sit down and get into my hammock. Normally I wouldn't get in with my boots in, but don't worry for this video. And then from here I can zip my, um, I can zip my bug net shut. I could unzip it all the way and gather it up to the, the ridge line without the spreader bars in case I wanted to have more of an open night uh, if it's real hot like August or July. But in the winter or even in the fall, this will form enough of a microclimate, I don't know if you can even see me in here, that this will keep me fairly warm. Right? So I recommend an integral or integrated bug net in your hammock, whatever one you get. If you don't have one uh, on hammock audio, no big deal. You can buy other bug nets that hang from a ridge line and then you run the hammock through the bug net and you just have to zip it, get in, fish around and zip it. That's just fine. So that is um, the basics of hanging the hammock, uh, especially if you have one with the integrated bug net. You can hang a ridge line from the straps. We talked about the straps. I showed you how I staged mine with the shock cord Packing it in with the snake skins and the carabiners already in place works really well. Um, some people worry about the weight, even with a hammock, but instead of focusing so much on ultralight, I say just get stronger. Maybe practice uh, carrying something a little heavier once in a while and you'll be strong enough to sleep comfortably. Why do I have a steak in my pocket? Anyway, so there's hanging the hammock. Uh, I'm not gonna put the tarp up. Everybody knows at this point how to pitch a tarp. So now I will, um, We'll take a short break, and then coming up soon, hopefully in a couple days, will be the second half of this video, ah, next week, where we talk about how to sleep comfortably in the hammock. So stay tuned for that. Like, subscribe, share, turn on the notifications so you don't miss the second half of this uh, video. And that's it.